How's it going, everyone? It is Ethan Rona Coder, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Build Twitter. Last episode, we actually were successfully able to go ahead and send an email over to our user. So now all we have to do to kind of finish up the registration flow is go ahead and make us so the user can send the code back to verify their email, and then also go ahead and set that password. After we complete these two tasks, we're gonna actually go ahead and hop in and do some front-end development. So let's go ahead and get to work. So at this point, we just got some pretty standard things to do left. So now let's go ahead and hop over to our controller and into our authentication controller. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll down under to email slash code. I'm gonna make a new post mapping and I'm going to call this slash email slash verify because the first one was to send the email. The second one is going to be to update the email. So this is going to be a public user application user, application user. And then this is going to take in an at request body. Actually, I might want to call it something. So we'll call this verify email. And then this is, of course, going to take in an at request body. And again, I'm going to cheat and use a linked hash map because it's going to send over the uh, email and the code. So string string body like so and go ahead this should be linked hash map. So now it's going to obviously complain because we're not returning anything. We'll go ahead and say long code is equal to body or actually we're going to say long dot parse long and we're going to pass in the body dot get and we're going to get the code from the body. So again, this acts just like a hash map where you get it by key and then we're going to say string username is equal to body dot get and then this is going to be under username so we've already seen how we send these over nothing crazy just a regular json object now what I have to do is say return user service dot verify email and we're going to pass in the username and the code this does not exist so we need to go ahead and create this verify email to that we'll go ahead and come over here create the method and there we go. The only thing is I am going to move it up above the private stuff. So I'll put it up to here. So now what we need to go ahead and do first, we're going to say if the user exists or if the user doesn't exist, go ahead and throw a new exception. So we've been doing this quite a bit. Um, so again, if we send in a username that doesn't exist to go ahead and do that. Next, we're going to say if code dot equals user dot get uh, verification. So if it is the same code, we'll go ahead and say user dot set enabled to true. So we can now use our account and user dot set to verification to false or null. So we want a null value in there whenever we are not actually um, doing that. So we're going to go ahead and return user repo dot um, save. And we'll go ahead and save that user. Otherwise, we'll say else. And we'll get rid of this return null because we're going to throw a new exception. We'll say throw new incorrect verification code. Whoops. Asian code exception like so. And of course, this doesn't exist either. So go ahead and create that. This is going to go into our exceptions. Like always, finish. And we're going to make sure this extends runtime exception. And we'll go ahead and add in the default serial ID. We'll make a public incorrect verification code exception. Of course, you don't have to do this. Um, I'm just being a little bit extra here. We'll call in the super and inside of it, we want to just say the code passed did not match the user's verification code. Awesome. So now that should all be good. The last thing that we need to do is just go ahead and create a handler for that exception. So we'll go in here at handler. And we'll say this should be exception handler. Whoops. Exception handler. We'll pass in our um, incorrect verification code exception dot class. 
This will also just be a public response entity of type string. One of these days I'll create the right one and this will be incorrect code handler. And then in here we'll say return new response entity of type string. And we'll say the code provided does not match the user's code. And then we'll say HTTP status dot conflict. All right, go ahead and import this. Um, did I spell this wrong? Let me double check. Nope, I think it's just being difficult. There we go. Now, of course, we have to start up our backend. So go ahead and do that. Everything started up fine. So next we need to go ahead and get our temp email. So go ahead and copy this guy. And now let's hop into Postman. So first we'll go ahead and register with our fake email. Go ahead and paste that guy in and send. All right, go ahead and grab our uh, username and update our phone number. Paste that in. Go ahead and send the code to the email. Send. All right. Let's double check that the code is there. We have our code from unknown coder. And now what we need to do is make a new request in here. Add request. This will be slash auth slash email slash verify. And this is a post request to HTTP colon slash slash auth slash email slash verify. This is going to take in a raw JSON body and this is going to need a username which is that username. And then we're also gonna need a code, which is inside of our email. This does have to be sent as a string the way that we have it set up. So maybe it would be a good idea to go back through and refactor that just for the heck of it. But I'll go ahead and grab the code. It's not that big of a deal as long as you know what you're doing and send. And as you see, enabled is now true. It didn't really do anything crazy, but now uh, if we also look inside of our database really quick, let me expand this so I can refresh our table and we refresh user. You'll see that verifications also know. So now all we have to do now is make it so we can update that password field. So to do that, all we actually have to do is just create one final endpoint. That's just a put mapping and it's not going to do anything crazy. Although we do have to go ahead and set up a password encoder, which is something we will get into in a second. So now all we actually have to do is create one more endpoint that lets us update our password. And then we also have to do one more thing inside of the configuration file for spring security. That way we can actually encode our password before we save it. So now back inside of our authentication controller, let's make one more put mapping at put mapping and this will be the slash um, update slash password and inside here we'll say public application user and we'll say update password and then this will be at request body and then this will be also a linked hash map with a string string and then a body all right. So first thing we need is we need the string username equal to body dot get username. Then we need our string password, which is equal to body dot get password. This will be passed in through JSON like normal. Now all we have to do is return user service user service dot set password. And this is going to take a little bit more work than just setting the password, but we will do that in a second. First, we will go ahead and just create the stub inside of the user service really quick. So go ahead and put this here. But before we actually do anything, we need to go back into our uh, security configuration and set up a password encoder. That way the password doesn't get stored in plain text. So we're gonna say at bean, and we're gonna say public password encoder, password encoder, like so. And then we're gonna say return 
new bcrypt because bcrypt is uh, kind of like the popular one to use nowadays. Password encoder, it uses salting and all that good stuff. So go ahead and return that. We will also make sure to import these. I'm pretty sure the console is going to complain for the time being, but it's okay, we'll completely restart the application. So now that we have our password encoder uh, configured, Spring is gonna create this bean for us and we can auto wire it into our user service. So now we'll go ahead and say private final uh, password encoder password encoder and we'll go ahead and first import this from spring security we'll also go ahead and add it into our constructor so password encoder password encoder we're going to have to start making this a little bit bigger or not bigger but adding some new lines we'll go ahead this dot password encoder equals password encoder so now what we can do is we can take this password encoder which spring is actually creating for us and encode a password before we save it in the database so now when we scroll down to set password we'll go ahead and say uh, first grab this again and check for the application user realistically we can make this a method but i don't really care then we'll say string encoded password is equal to password encoder dot encode and pass in that password and finally we'll say user dot set password and then pass in that password or encoded password my bad encoded password and then we just need to return user repo dot save so this one was one of the easier ones you just had to know how to create that bean now i'm going to go ahead and restart the server just to be safe because sometimes it gets a little bit wonky when you add new beans and and things of that sort but we are up and running so let's go ahead and test this out one last time so we'll go ahead and go into os slash register and we'll register a new user we got our unknown coder uh temporary name go ahead and paste that temporary name in here paste run this okay we updated our phone number go ahead and throw it in here to get a verification code sent to our email okay so let's go ahead and check our email go into here and refresh refresh okay there we go we got a verification code it's different so grab it and put it into postman so here's our verification code paste Oh, I forgot to paste in the new username. So that's good that the handler still works. And send it. Cool, cool. There we go. Now we just need to make one more. So go ahead and make a new request. Make this a put request to slash auth slash update slash password. And we'll go ahead and say HTTP colon slash update slash password go ahead and go to the body raw json and in here we'll have our username like before and it should still be pasted cool and we'll have the password that we want to include let's just say password and now when we send this you're not going to see the password inside here because again it's not great security to send it but if we go into our dbver and refresh our user you should see that we have an encrypted password that we should be able to check later. So that completely concludes our entire signup flow. We did the first step, which is first name, last name, email, date of birth. We go ahead and do another step, which we'll do on the front end. Then we confirm. Then we go ahead and add our phone number. We confirm our email and we set our password. And at this point, we'll be signed in. Appreciate you all. If you guys enjoyed, please sure to leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Either way, it helps out with the YouTube algorithm. As always, make sure you leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for me or anything that you might want to see me build later on after this series is over. And finally, if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any videos. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out. Have a great day.